tax day is coming. Oh, no. But if you sign up for Robinhood Gold's IRA with a 3% match, you can get up to $195 for the 2023 tax year. Oh, yeah. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash boost by tax day to get the biggest contribution match on the market. Subscription fees apply. You know you Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. Welcome to the Dragon's Lair. Hello and welcome to the Dragon's Lair podcast, your home of all things Dragons RFC and rugby in the region. I'm Jamie and join me as always is my co-host Gavin Thomas. How are you doing, Gav? I'm very well, Jamie. I'm, I'm not one for mountain misery on misery in the list of Dragons podcast. But my week has been defined by a 32-mile train journey that took nearly three and a half hours yesterday. So I am I am currently full of rage, but uh, other than that, I'm fine. Are we going to be talking about the dragons? So uh, <laughs> try to limit that rage if it's possible. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so you can find us on platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts, and the Sports Social Network. And if you like what we do, please rate us and leave us a good review as it all helps to grow the pod. So tonight, Gav, what we're going to do uh, on the pod is we're going to look at the season so far for the Dragons. Um, What's going right? Not much. What's going wrong? Quite a lot. And what needs to be improved, etc. It's that kind of thing. And to help us do that, we have the sports reporter for the South Wales Argus. And fair play, how he manages to juggle Dragons and Newport County is quite remarkable. He's a very busy man, but he is joining us tonight. Um, it's Chris Kerwin. Chris, welcome to the pod. How are we? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Really appreciate you, Joyce. I know you're busy, man. I know you're working on the Transfer Day blog as we speak, so uh, any new book out to news, please uh, feel free Indeed, to, to let us know. It's quite a day. When this, when this is published, people might uh, they'll, they'll either know that it was a dramatic few hours or I, I just uh, was waiting till 11, so we'll, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, so uh, let's get into it. So let's look at what's happened so far. In the URC and Europe, the Dragons have played a total of 13 games and we've won just three of them. So we had two wins in the league against our Welsh rivals, Ospreys and Scarlets. And we picked up a bonus point win against Oyana in the Challenge Cup. And there were some pretty painful defeats uh, already this season. Thinking about those defeats out in Munster when we had that depleted squad. Out in South Africa as well, that was pretty tough, including that record defeat to the Sharks. And then we had that absolute shambles at the Arms Park, didn't we, with uh, Dragons losing 55-21 to Cardiff. So, Chris, what have we learned about the Dragons so far this season? Um, well, the, the, <laughs> this one feels... I know, yeah, straight in there with that. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's been quite a familiar feel let's be honest about it it's um a lot of a lot of optimism and it, it's quick quickly gone the, the same old isn't it they're, near, they're still nearly men which is you yeah. know the frustration there are games there once again they should have they should have been winning and and we we're in this break now and they're out of europe and they shouldn't be out of europe let's be honest they, they had chances there before the sharks game to be still in it and that would have given us all that that usual thing of having at least a bit of European knockout rugby to look forward to in the, the sort of closing months of the season. But I would say that, yeah, there are bleating on about positives, which you, you can do. There are, there are some young players coming through and that is one of the, one of the plus points, maybe not to the extent of how, how Cardiff have done it with the success they've had, but there are some really exciting young, young players coming through. And I think we'll see more of them in the running. Yeah, you mentioned you were up there. That was very disappointing, Chris, because I don't know about you, and I don't know about you either, Gav. When those pools were drawn, I looked at our pool and I thought, we'll get out of that. You know, I, I felt confident. Foolish, I mean, foolishly, maybe so, I don't know, but I looked at it. I felt confident the Dragons were going to get out of that pool. And, you know, we started off with a really good uh, bonus point win against Stoyana. Then we went to Poe, who had a very good performance, got pipped right at the death. But you're thinking, well, that's okay, because we came away with a bonus point. 
should have beaten Seabird. It's that second half drop off, which has happened a lot this season. And the Sharks game, I think, as soon as they came to that situation where the Dragons had to win, because we know Dragons are not very good under pressure, once we knew we had to win, I think it was always going to be very difficult. But uh, you were, but I do agree with you, Chris. It's been very disappointing, isn't it? Because I do think that would have given supporters something to cheer, a bit of respite from the struggles of the URC, isn't it? Yeah, no, it, no it's. And it, we, we, my Europe, it, it really gives a, you know, a sense of knockout. I've been after Glasgow last season, I think you looked at that group and you're thinking, yeah, let's get a home yeah. game. And it really, those what you, you supporters who pay hard money to, to, to go and watch the Dragons, you, you, you want big occasions. You don't get many of them. And they've blown oh. another chance really to get a good knockout tie there, which is, that's the frustration. I mean, it, it, I would say the the new makeup of Europe it, it is a bit odd how you can still get done by the fixtures, can't you? Because it's it's almost who you get at home and away. It's a little bit warped. Um, they, yeah. they probably could have done with having the sharks away and just not getting you know, getting getting battered in South Africa and then you know having if it had been zebra at home they they win that, don't they? So it's um, yeah. It's, well, <laughs> you'd hope so. Yeah, it, <laughs> But but it's you know that they didn't have have any minnows in the group. But as I guess the Scarlets have shown, having minnows in a group isn't necessarily a a good thing. Yeah, uh, mm, that's a very good point. So I, um, I, obviously, Chris, oh, go on, Gab. I, I was just thinking the the disappointment this year for Dragons for me has been not so much that we haven't won many games. There's been a couple of games where we've just really really kind of folded up. And not done anything. And the zebra game, I can almost put to one side because yeah, we should have beat them. But it's a, it's the Cardiff games, it's the Sharks. You know, they're the games which are problematic for me. I think where we've shown very little spirit. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the ones that fans, you fans get because it's yeah, you know, I, I, they do care. But there are times when you know when the <laughs> that Cardiff game. It, it was, it looked like they didn't. It, it was just, it was way too easy. There was, there was yeah, just individual mistakes. Uh, and so many people to make so many mistakes was uh, remarkable, really. I, I don't think anyone mm. saw it coming, to be brutally honest. Well, no. We we both said there was a chance we could win it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the hope that kills you, isn't it? Uh, That's our <laughs> motto now on this podcast, Chris. I don't feel listen to us. We always say it's the hope that kills you. You mentioned the Cardiff game. There, Chris. Um, they took a lot of criticism, rightly so, from a lot of fans um, and people in the media, pundits, etc. Jiffy came out on X and said, a lot of the Dragons players are not good enough to be pro. Look at the results over the last few years. Do you think he's got a point? I think there are some players at the Dragons probably that you know have been kept on too long at certain times. Yeah, I would say he was saying that after you look at that twenty three against Cardiff, and I'm 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 not sure many of them you you probably have that argument about being pro. Um, pretty much all of them are they're established <laughs> established yeah, players in that twenty three. So I, I'm not sure about being a pro. I would say there are uh, there probably does need to be an element of a culture shift of. Uh, Pushing, pushing, sort of good, honest local lads to the to the door after a few years, but saying, "Mate, I don't know. That's easier said than done." <laughs> I guess it's. Um, I, I think he was a bit harsh, saying pro, mm. but um, but no, they certainly you know to get that top end level pro is probably um, is probably probably right. There's there's a balance to be made, isn't there? Because the dragons traditionally yeah. have been been strong when they been able to get a tune out of people that other people think might be a journeyman and i know we're harking back a long time to the the paul turner days when he was there but that, that, that's what that's what they did wasn't it you find someone like a joe beerman and you you turn him into yeah. a really good pro and that that's what you want to want to see that progression as well with people who might not be valued by others but really can come in and can can yeah. produce um no, i agree yeah, because I think that when we've signed big name players, Chris, 
it hasn't worked out for us, has it? You know, I, I just think of like Rob Evans, for example. You know, I was really excited when we signed Rob Evans. I thought, brilliant, great signing. You know, he's going to want to get his Wales place back. And we, we've signed a lot of big name players who just haven't delivered for us for some reason. I think there is something to be said for those hard working players who are not household names, you know, the, the likes of um, George Knott, for example, and Sean Lonsdale. I think they've been pretty good for us. Um, what, what do you think, Gav? Do, do you think that's the route we need to go down now and sign these, you know, what Chris is referring to? Not, maybe not journeymen, but sort of lesser known players, but players you know are going to perform sort of week in, week out, rather than big names? Well, I think yes, but at the minute, I'm not quite sure what it is that Dai is looking for, you know, as a playing group as a whole. What, yeah, it's difficult to work out what the playing style is. Is it Defensive rugby, we do play a lot of kicking game, but then we are trying to throw it about, and he needs to get players that fit what he's trying to do. And at the minute, it almost feels like he's getting whatever's about, and hoping it fits into what we're trying to do. You know, like Dan Lydiot's a great example of it. I, I like Dan Lydiot as a player, you know, and he started with us, and it's great that he's ending with us. But does Dan Lydiot add anything to the playing group that we have? Is he bringing it, offering anything else? No, I, I'd i really like Dai to say, you know, the players I want are like this. I want big mobile back row. I want this, I want that. And these are the players I'm going to get. And, and just go looking everywhere for them. You know, finding them in the English Championship, finding them in the English First Division, dragging them out to the Curry Cup. I think that's yeah. what, what, what the... The plan is is to to go for those players. That's what they were trying to do with Dion Slabber, who would have added to the the second row. Um, mm. He was a player who's uh, under the radar of many, and I guess it's being that you've got to accept you, where you are on the food chain, and it's almost being that stepping mm. stone, which is what you know that'd be a good a good route for someone, isn't it? So you come play for us, earn that move to France, that sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's getting those players of potential, but equally you can't when you've got tight budget you can't just have punts on people they need and that's but that is where i know they're doing their they're doing their research on people and when you mention english championship that's where i guess the sounding board of paul turner is very useful he knows that yeah. he knows that division very well he knows players of potential yeah. he knows the welsh exile group of people who, who who have that as well where they can dangle that carrot um but then i, I think I, I i see what the lydia signing adds because the, the whole point is that you do have these ex factor players, uh, of Wainwright, Basham. You need to free them up, and you need to you need someone like that. And I, I also think is I think he's only played four games. Mm-hmm. I'll put my head, but I, I do know for a fact he's he's massive around the place. If you've got George Young, Ryan Woodman, they are you but don't mental, just sign one he? to be you don't yeah you don't just sign someone to be a a teacher. But it is it is valuable when they've not got the the biggest coaching staff in the world as well. So similar with yeah. Steph Hughes with these young centres coming through. I mean, he is by all accounts a, a great bloke to to teach their next generation. So it's um, it's finding that balance, isn't it? Mm, yeah, absolutely. So Chris, when you watch the Dragons this season, what stands out to you as being the main weaknesses in this team? And, and the issues that need fixing. Because me and Gavin always talk about, you know, the lack of leadership. The, the compounding errors for me drives me nuts. The, the unforced yeah. errors. It really drives me nuts to see players, you know, when they can't catch a ball or when they make an unforced error. What, what, what are the issues that are standing up for you, Chris? What frustrates you when you cover the Dragons? It's, it's when you see momentum going. I don't think they're very good at changing that momentum. It, it, is, a, it is a very hard thing to do in rugby. But mm. they, when things start going wrong, they really, I, I think they struggle to wrestle back control. Um, yeah. You, you, you yeah. see things creaking and it, it, you can just feel it going. And yeah. they, they don't manage to wrestle it back. And um, whether that's down to game management, I'm not, I don't know, or uh, somebody who can come up with a big moment. It's, but it's, it, it's those moments that they, and the lack of a real killer instinct. And it's hard to, Sounds harsh. I'm going to dig out one player here, but that that Jared Rosser try go ten nil up against the Sharks. I know. Like, yeah, it's moments like that where you. Yeah, and that sounds harsh because I'm picking off one one bloke, but well, my job to to do it. My best. <laughs> but um, but that was a big moment. You go ten nil up, and that's just changing the complexion of the game. Similar. Yeah. 
there, were, there, there have been times in Zebra, I don't know, they did build a nice score, but you get that big, they if they go from, say, 9 to 16, that's, you, you can you can crack a team, whereas, mm. I don't know, they, they, they miss those sorts of opportunities. I, I think there's been a couple of sliding doors moments to uh, to quote uh, a film that I just realised is about 25 years old. But, uh, you know, there have been a few moments in a few games where if they'd gone slightly differently, it would have been different. Jared Rosser against Cardiff earlier in the season when he's under pressure, but all he had to do was kind of pick her up and he's over. Jared Rosser against Sharks there again. And just some decision making in the game against uh, Zebra, uh, also against Edinburgh as well. Where if we kicked more effectively, that game was different. And yeah, and everyone could say that, you know. If I was uh, going to say it can work the other way, I'm sure the Scarlets are saying. Yeah. It cost a <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, but I don't really care what the Scarlets are saying. But uh, you know, they, they can have their own sliding doors <laughs> moments. But. Uh, <laughs> You know, and, and the season has been like that. But the problem is, if you're a better team, the sliding those moments go your way. Yeah, yeah. Just to pick up on what Chris is saying, though, um, when we are under the cosh, you do get a sense that you know, the Dragons are going to oh, implode. And yeah. we've seen this, Gav, we've talked about it so many times on this pod, and we, we've seen it so many times throughout the years. And I'm going to say this though, I don't know what Chris thinks about this, because he covers both County and Dragons. I want the Dragons to be more like Newport County, okay? So I got a season ticket for both teams, as you know. What I love about watching the County, when they're under the cosh, they fight. There's real grit in that team. They fight to the end. And I think that's the motto, isn't it, Chris? I remember you writing in a piece, um, it's like their unofficial motto, Newport yeah, County well, should be fight to the end. That, yeah. yeah, but but why can't that be the Dragons? I just wish they followed their example. You know, I was at Boxing Day at Ronnie Parade. County went 2-0 down to Forest Green Rovers. We came back and we won 4-2. Really, really good performance. So we were under the cosh. Came back, brilliant performance. Meanwhile, I'm looking at my phone and I'm seeing Dragons throwing the white towel against Cardiff. You know, it's that kind of thing. When we're under pressure, we're not very good at handling it, are we? And, I'm not saying the players don't try. I know that they, they train really hard and I'm sure they are giving their all. They are professional players. But I just want to see a bit more fight and grit, Chris. Do, do you think that's fair to say that? Or, you know? At times, yeah. It's, it, it's sort of those... Sometimes it is harder comparing uh, football and rugby. And, cause it, but, yeah. Cause it, but like it's easier said than done sometimes when you're playing them. I was thinking... Not necessarily the sharks, but when the so like the, when the storm, I think it was a, no, no, it was the bulls, wasn't it? Last season, who came with it just ginormous, and yeah, you know, when momentum's going oh, against yeah. them, you, you, yeah, it's just it's very hard. But there are times, no, I tend to agree with you where it's you know sticking on in there and just managing those moments and being able yeah. to just dig in and then change the momentum. And it, but you are right as well with the you mentioned earlier the compounding. Compounding errors and yeah, yeah. piggybacking back in penalties. They're the uh, they're the killers, aren't they? And we see them more. So, we see them so often. <laughs> we do, <laughs> and I don't want to give any credit to Cardiff if I can help it, but they have been competitive in almost every game they've played because they are showing a lot of fight and the youngsters are stepping up. And I just want to see us have a bit more fight, a bit more grit. And when we are under the cosh, you know, don't lose your heads because we we see it time and time again. You know, you can feel it and. I wonder why that is. Is that a culture thing, do you think, Chris? Because yeah, this funny. isn't just a recent thing. We've seen this at the Dragons for a number of years, and I'm sure you have as well. What do you think it, it comes down to? It is, as you, there is an element of that, isn't there? Diamond Di mentions breaking the cycle of things, and how you do that yeah. in the Dragons is an interesting one. But um, so there were times, let's not make out the whole Dean Ryan um, era was all bad. There were, there were times no, where they, they were really good. And, Tenacious when you yeah. had, you know, Moriarty in there, and you know, especially yeah. when Will, especially when Will Rollins, Rollins was there. I think that, I think, the Dragons' form over the past couple of years highlight how good Will Rollins is because when he was in that yeah. side, they were a completely different side. Um, Absolutely. So, so there are times where they've shown that grit, um, determination, yeah. and mixed it with some big old sides, but yeah. 
But we haven't seen enough, Chris. If we, that's the problem, I think. We just haven't seen enough. Well, it's both you and I, Jamie, have said that it does lack leadership. It lacks sometimes a cool head to just say, right, this is what we're going to do and slow it all down. But when they yeah. when, when people try and slow it down, you get people shouting from the stands, run it. It's an it's, oh, they can't, We've had they this can't debate win. on the pod. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tipping it down and people want a fullback to be running it. But, anyway. I, I know. but I, I think, you know, that's that's to do with rugby crowds in Wales in general who think it's 1974 and, you know, think you're running through defensive lines that aren't structured. Whereas now it's a pro game, defensive lines are utterly structured and the best teams kick a lot. But, you know, you... <laughs> yeah. Also, just to add, I would urge anyone to listen to our James Benjamin uh, pod and Sam Lana, who both explained very well why players kick the ball. So, um, yeah, if you haven't listened to those pods, go back because Jumbo came on the pod and he explained it well, Gab, didn't we? You know, from his point, from a player's point of view, and Sam Lan, who was a really good analyst, he explained as well. So, um, yeah, that's that then. Okay, let's move on to um, recruitment then or retaining players. Um, so we know that Rio Dyer and Aaron Wainwright have signed new deals for the Dragons, which is great news. I'm sure you all agree. Now, those two were the priority in terms of keeping players. And the attention now is going to turn to the likes of Leon Brown and Team Basham. So I want to get your feeling on this one, Chris. Do you think Dragons are going to be able to keep Leon and Team? Or more to the point, do you think they'll want to keep both Leon and Team? Because this is an interesting one now, isn't it? Because I, I don't know about you, but me and Gav get the feeling that one of these players, maybe two, will leave the club. What, what, what do you think about that? And it comes down to valuations, doesn't it? That, that's where... Welsh rugby is in that position now where yeah. the club has to properly harshly work out what they how that how much they value a player. Um when that comes down to Leon, who is a sensational player on his day, but he just hasn't played enough. So you don't get you know, mm-hmm. that that's where the value for money comes in. What can they offer him? But at the yeah. same time, with Leon, because of his track record, will he be getting the offers from over the border that he might have done before his last contract. So it's, it's interesting. You never know what's out there. And there's, it, and he's he's starting for Wales against Scotland. That can go one or two ways, can't it? He, he might think, oh, I'm Wales tight head now. Or, or he might be thinking, oh, no, I need to you know, stay in Wales because I'm I'm, I'm in the fold. I'll, I'll accept it from the Dragons. It, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it, there's so many moving parts with all these things in it. There's agents doing their job by playing people against each other. Um, yep. But that's where the Dragons, or any club for that matter, has to get their valuation spot on, isn't it? And say, this is what he's worth for us. We've got to just stick with this and not not go chasing yeah. it. And Because essentially, if they use figures that aren't the figures, but if you pay, if you push the boat out by 50 grand more, that's going to mean you've got to cut someone else from you know it's yep. all it's all squad building it's, it's yeah. such a tricky thing to do which is why um yeah why the the, the dragons uh when losing their head of recruitment was <laughs> it's, it's suddenly added yes. to the, the job for the die mm. and getting the help of paul paul turner obviously but no there's, there's yep. some tough decisions to be made but at the same time there are some probably some savings that can be made as well I think for Leon, this Six Nations will be key, really, because if anyone is interested in signing them, it will be on the back of this. But, but I think with Leon as well, everyone knows how good he is when he's fit. But it, so it's so it's almost, in a sense, it's a it's almost a bit of an irrelevance, isn't it? Because there's you're either there'll be some clubs out there, mind who don't give don't give a monkey. They 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 think, oh well, we've got a proper test beast that's worth splashing out for. Yeah, but but others know they like English money. English clubs still need to be careful what they're spending. And agree, uh, yeah. So they won't be they won't be offering ridiculous money. No, they won't. And what about Tain then, Chris? Because I don't know about you, I I feel Tain's gone off the boil, especially since coming back for the World Cup. And we all know he is very talented, but he is prone to doing daft things. You know, that elbow to the head of Ross Boone, wasn't it, when uh, Leinster came to Rodney Parade? 
Um, what are your thoughts on Tate? Do, do you think there's a chance of us keeping him? Because there's a lot of rumours as well about him going to the Scarlets. Oh, no, yeah. It's, it's all out there and the Scarlets, no doubt, want him. But, but yeah. it, once again, comes down to, <laughs> to valuations or and also whether a player fancies a fresh challenge. Who knows? But with Tate, I think he's... He, he's he's a, a funny character in a way because he he can be an incredible an incredible player. But I just mm. remember Dean Ryan always had to manage him very carefully. He was he'd go out of his way to make sure that Tay knew he'd got work to do. So you can do all the flashy things in the world, but you've got to do the nuts and bolts even as a as a flanker. You look at yeah, he, he's just got to look at Jack Morgan. What Jack Morgan does, he comes up with some magnificent moments. But he does yeah. the basics brilliantly. And sometimes with Tame, you wonder, has he always got to have someone doing his doing his graft? I remember when he came through with Wales in the twenties, he always had there was often Lennon Greggans there, who was a, a a man for the for the toil. Um yeah. and when you've got Aaron Wainwright at number eight, it's I, I don't know, it's it's all about balance, isn't it? And that's um but it's interesting. I I they'd love to keep him. He's a is a, a local lad, of course, and he's still there's so much growth in Tame, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so I agree. Mm. What do you think, Gav, about Tame? Would you like to see us keep him? Yeah, the, the thing is, he's, he's a great athlete, he's at his best, he's, he's a great player. And uh, as Chris has said, you know, it's about he does fit into our back row because I think some of his less uh, strong qualities are covered by the fact that uh, Wayno does uh, does so much. So it would be great to keep him because who would replace him would be my question. You know, it's uh, of the, those four, well, two we've retained. If we had to lose any of them, I think I'd be most comfortable with losing Leon. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, I think if you spoke to most supporters, most would say that they'd rather lose Leon. He gets an awful lot of stick on social media, Leon, even in the Dragons forums. And I get it, it's the frustration of him not having played as much. And, you know, he gets injured, we don't see him for ages. Then he comes back into the Dragons team and then he gets called up for Wales. And then we don't see him again. So I get the frustration. But, um, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting, isn't it, to see uh, what happens there. And I think he's getting called up at the minute literally because who else do you call up you know yeah, there are the there, are, there are no tight heads out there so uh or no front row apparently but uh judging by the uh, the squad that's been selected for Saturday's game against Scotland you know it's so I I don't think him being a test player is uh necessarily a, a mark of quality either for for Leon at the minute mm. Well, we'll see how he gets on in the six stages. We'll talk about Wales' um, team in a minute. But um, I just want to get to what Dave Flanagan said this week, Chris. So he's talking about youngsters hmm. uh, in the Dragons. He said, we've got to expose a few more youngsters, got to bring in some depth into the squad, and with another round of cuts to come, I'm sure these boys will come through. So what youngsters do you think Dai is um, going to expose then, Chris? So, so we know about Harry Ackerman, who's been really, really good, very impressive. You and Ross are as impressed when he's had his opportunities out on the wing. But are there any other youngsters you think that may get their opportunities in the weeks to come? Well, it's, um, it's, it's about being careful with it as well, isn't it? Um, you look at, yeah. so they've got six six boys um, starting for Wales under-20s against Scotland, plus well, Everdale's Owen Conker's in there as well. Um, I, whether it's a bit soon for them, who knows? Because they tend to just be careful in in their cycle. So they'll have Six Nations, then they'll have World um, Rugby Under Twenty Championship this summer. Some of those boys, but amongst those, the the the, the fullback Hugh Anderson is interesting. Reese Weldon mm-hmm. is um in, in, interesting as well. Um, on the wing, big lad. Um, so. It's easier, isn't it, for back careers to to be given a taste of it. Um, but I certainly think Joe Westwood's one who will get a real real go as well. I think he's physically, yeah. is, um, he looks he looks good. So him and Harry, he's be, big, isn't he? Yeah, he's walked past so, me a few times in the yeah. the busy stand. He's a big boy, really big yeah. boy. So so him and <laughs> Harry Ackerman, I think, will be interesting. 
Harry, as I said, because he's in the under twenties, will will he? They be more careful with him post Six Nations. Where I I don't know. Mm. Um, but one other who's in there, there's some of those who who haven't really um that they're not new as such, but do they find a way of giving Brody Coughlin more more action? Because he's I like him. Yeah, yeah, he's a feisty he's a feisty hooker. So I think getting him in there is interesting. But then yeah, post Six Nations, I guess they they've got four. Four hookers then, but so you've got to work out how you get him involved. Um, mm. Barney Langton Cryer doing well for Newport. They they like the look of him, so he he played in Munster, so he's he's one in a position of weakness, I guess, second row. Um, I'd like to see maybe with an eye to next season, they need to work out if George Young's, you know, where where he sits and things, because traditionally the Dragons have always had a lot of back rowers, but I'm not sure that's the case that that it's you know they've not gotten that many numbers anymore with that because the next brigade the um it, it, it's not so clear there so he's a, he's an interesting one and then there's the the props of, of, you know with luke yendall's done very well this season so yes um, he can scrim chris can't he that's why i like uh, about luke yendall i know he's raw but he looks like he can scrim so it's, it'll be interesting whether you know with fair brother fair brother there you do you then take the chance is yendall above has he gone above chris coleman that's be interesting oh, and, uh, for uh, me that's... yes well yeah I think for me, we've said um... it a number of times haven't we that I'd always start Yendel over Coleman I think and then, and then on the other side you've got Dylan Keller Griffiths so he's got to yeah. really get a chance at some stage but it's uh, you've got to pick your games carefully haven't you yeah. yeah, and it's like you said, you've got to get the balance right as well, Levin. That's really important because the Dragons did in the bird of Jackman, as you know, Chris, chuck the load of kids in, get battered, and you're not learning anything. And it's not, it harms their development, doesn't it, when you do that, I think, as well. I think Chris hit the nail on the head where he said, You've got to pick your games carefully. We haven't been able to pick our games carefully this season, so we've had to put kids into situations that you wouldn't have wanted them to, like the Lions away, like. Uh, like sharks away. Yeah. No, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about the Wales team then. So that's been announced today. So there are four dragons in the team to face Scotland. We've got Leon Brown, uh, Wainwright, Rio Dyer, uh, Elliot D is on the bench. So um, as Chris pointed out on X earlier today, Leon Brown will make his first Wales start since 2021, which is also against Scotland, funny enough. Only three of his previous 23 caps have been as a starter. Um, this is a massive game for Leon, though, Chris, isn't it? This one, real big uh, opportunity for him now. What is it? No, it's um, he's he, this is a big chance to um, yeah, mm. make a make a statement. I think it was um, it's actually Argentina. I think his last start. So um, and it was oh, um, right, okay. yes, no, it's, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's um, he he's got to grasp this chance. I think it's t- tournament as a whole, or you know, he's got to really back up the games. Um, and put them on. I, I wouldn't be surprised if him and Azarati sort of swap it round. Maybe I, I don't know. Um, they'll 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 try and get the new the new Bath lad in at some stage, no doubt. But um, but no, he's got to he's got to show up um in the tight, uh, but then do what he does around the around the park. That there aren't I don't know is it anecdotal that there aren't as many scrums in Test rugby as it that it seems can seem that way. But um, yeah, he needs to. He needs to do what he did against the Ox. So he was good against Yes, he was. Yeah. Scrubbish really well against the Australian Sharks game. Um, For a bit, I thought. Not not as long as he should. Could have. I I don't know. You you know my views, uh, Jamie. uh, I'm not worried how well a tight head can get around the park. I want to see how much he puts his loose head under pressure. The opposing loose head under pressure. But to, to be fair, I mean, look, we all saw that Scarlet's game when he came off the bench and he, he gave away four penalties against the Scarlet's and uh, that almost proved costly. But in fairness, you know, and people were making this point today about, oh, you know, Scrum's going to go to shit, you know, Leon started. They said, he did pretty well against the Sharks. I, I, I thought he scrummaged okay. I don't think Leon is a terrible scrummager. We know scrummaging is not the strongest part of his game because he's a dynamic ball carrier. But um, it's a big opportunity for this, but it is uh, going to be a huge challenge. So, Chris, when you look at this Wales team that's been announced today up against Scotland, I don't know if you've seen the Scotland team. Um, how do you feel this is going to go for Wales? Because uh, it's fair to say a lot of people are not confident 
about Wales's chances in the Six Nations. You know, some people say it looks a bit wooden spoony, although personally I don't feel that we will finish no. last. How, how do you feel um, this Six Nations is going to go for Wales? Oh, I, I wouldn't be too pessimistic. I, I, it is the, the first game is always important, isn't it? That's a cliche yeah. alert, bang, bang, bang. But it's sort of um, <laughs> it. I, I don't know. It's with this side, it is a, it's an exciting side. I think it's about as good as Wales can go with. Obviously, mm. ideally, you'd, you'd have Will Rowlands in there, but obviously, personal circumstances for him mean he can't play. But, but yeah, no, it's, I don't, I don't think it's a not bad side at all. It's a, a few, it's, it's exciting, isn't it? Start of the new cycle and just have a just have a crack. I think and in, in Cardiff, I, I don't know. It's it's you know, I think they think they've got a, they've got a fair chance. Um, yeah. There are there are tough ones. If they, if big ifs, but if they you know, if if they do lose, suddenly you're going Christ. And it's um Twickenham next Ireland. It's uh, yeah. You suddenly <laughs> suddenly one of those because uh, uh, England aren't great, but they'll always have a good pack, won't they? So yeah. Um, so it's that that factor is interesting. So I don't know. I don't know. I it's it's just, be just good to good to see him. Thankfully, County Swindon's at twelve forty five, so get back for it. So. Yes, yes, I will be at that game. Um, my plan is to go to the County Swindon game and then go straight to the pub to watch uh, the rugby. How is it going to work for you then, Chris? Because I presume you're covering that game, but will you be covering um, um, well, Scotland for the Argus as well? Or? Oh, well, I'll be um, covering County and either getting back and watching it and doing bits and bobs, but no, I won't be covering it, covering it. Yeah, we, we, we still with the local stuff. So it's, yeah, it's now now that I'm a one-man sports desk, it's um, yeah, County and Dragons and... Yeah, any any whale stuff has to uh, sadly not quite get my attention as much any anymore. But, but there we are. Mm. <laughs> Fair enough. So, what do you think about this team then, Gav? You've seen it today. Um, how do you feel about chances against Scotland? I mean, when you look at the two teams, I'll be honest. Scotland should win comfortably if you're looking at the two lineups. But let's not forget, Scotland have been bottling it in Cardiff since 2002. Um, they always get talked up every year as dark horses. So history is against them. But when you do look at the two sides, particularly the front row, does look an area of concern. Um, Cost lower tenure, I think, is very talented, but we haven't got the security uh, and the comfort of knowing that Dan Bigger is there. You know, there's a lot of inexperience in the team. How do you feel about it? Well, so I think this is probably the best Scotland team since 1990, and I'm old enough to remember that team. But uh, and I was talking to I was talking to Sam Lana today about the squad selection and I was talking up the Scotland team and he made a couple of decent points. He said he doesn't think their pack does enough work around the field, uh, particularly defensively sometimes. And he said that as much as Finn is a great player, Finn does better in clubs where they basically make him do what the club needs rather than for Scotland where he does whatever he wants. And then I was thinking about the Welsh team. You know, there's a lot of structure in that Welsh side. The, the balance is good in the back row. I think the second row is good as well. You know, it's athletic and massive. Yes, I'm not sure about Costello, but uh, you've got Gareth Davis there, who is experienced. Losing George North in the centres wasn't ideal. Berwyn Watkin is a good player, a good strong player, and does a defensive job as well, which is what a 13 really has to focus on. And then earlier in the season, we both said we'd like Cam win it, so it's good to see him. And the backs bench is well, that's where we go in, isn't it? You know, it's Johan Lloyd, Mason Grady, they're going to be Welsh internationals well into the next decade, I imagine. Yeah, Cam Wynn is an exciting young player, don't get me wrong. I am pleased to see him there, but let's face it, he's no Kai Evans, is he? No, you know, I give don't. Ka- give, me, give me Kai Evans every day. <laughs> I, I, I sent a text to a friend of mine uh, that uh, questioned, in uh, not entirely uh, safe work words, where Kai Evans was. Yes, uh, I, I did think he'd be in the 23, but he's not there. Yeah, so the one thing I want to see now is Rio Dyer have his hands on the ball. Yeah. Because I don't know if you noticed this, Chris. I watched um, the Zebra game and then I watched the Sharks game. Rio Dyer barely had the ball. 
He barely had the ball, did he? And if he doesn't have the ball, then he can't score tries. No. And with Mason Grady breathing down his neck, I do think people, if Rio has a so-so game, I can see a lot of people saying Mason Grady needs to go out in the wing. So uh, this is a big uh, opportunity as well, isn't it, Chris, for Rio to die, especially with Louis Rissamit now out of the picture to cement that wing spot for Wales. Well, of course, yeah, no, and he's. Uh, I do think he's he's really made strides with the uh, the unglamorous side of the wing play, I guess. Um, but yeah. as you say, yeah, no, it's um, yeah. he 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 can be such a threat um, in in the loose. You just think back, probably what one of the best ones was Judgment Day, wasn't it? When he when he was oh, really, he was elected yeah. that day, and that's what you want to see, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, showing those that footwork to really go at absolutely. People. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we love for you on this podcast. So I want to get a couple of um, predictions from you, Chris. I want to know who you think will win out of Wales, Scotland this weekend. I want to know who you think the Six Nations champions will be and who's going to get a win spoon. There we are. So um, are you on the spot now? Say, <laughs> I, um, you're you're going to laugh at me now. I, 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 sneaky, I don't know. Could Wales do it? I, 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 won't, I won't be amazed. For, uh, for, probably just Scotland, I, I would say. Probably. Probably then. My mum's Scottish, yeah. so, uh, so there we are. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> yeah, so, so there we are. Um, <laughs> uh, France, France to win it. I think they'll uh, overcome the mm. a few few changes yeah, there. I think. Uh, I mean, it's yeah, France Ireland decides it, doesn't it? Um, wouldn't mm-hmm. uh, wouldn't spoon will be Italy. Uh, uh, Wales will have enough to stay above them. And although I don't know, will Eng- England will be interesting. How they how they go out there in Rome? But yeah. no, nah, I think. It's not a particularly brave call, is it? Saying Italy for wooden spoon, but there we are. That French mm. team looks ferocious. The the two Alangi cousin nephew, wherever he is, who was selected in the second row, is just frightening. Yeah, I am not a light man. He is half my weight again. <laughs> and six foot ten. Yeah. They they got some monsters in that French pack, and don't get me wrong, they've lost a lot of big name players. We know the Dupont is not there because of the Olympics, and Interbac is currently injured. Um, but you know they got Luku and they got um Jali Bay, which I mean that's not a bad halfback period, is it? And they're tearing it up in the top fourteen with Bordeaux. So um yeah, very strong, very physical French team. I've tipped them to win the Six Nations yeah. as well, but not a Grand Slam. I, I think they'll win the Six Nations, but I don't think anyone is gonna. Going to get a grand slam, and I've predicted it needs to be the, the wooden spoon. Where, where are they dropping so, a game then? Where are they dropping a game if they don't, if they beat Ireland? France. Where are they dropping a game? Yeah. Um, well, Harley said on our pod, he reckons Scotland could beat them at Murrayfield. Oh, <laughs> I kind God. of laughed at that. I was like, no. I, I could see him slipping up to, mm. like, you know, I can't see him slip. I don't think they will lose to Ireland, but it wouldn't surprise me if Ireland turned up and beat them. Potentially England. I, I don't see Wales. I mean, we're, we're not going to beat them. Um, Italy won't beat them, of course. But uh, I, I think potentially it could be yeah. Ireland or England, I would say. Oh. Oh, but you think, Chris? Where are they going to slip up? Or do you think they'll win the Grand Slam then? I think, well, I, I, I think if they beat Ireland, I think it's, yeah, be a brave man. Murrayfield is a. Yeah. Who, who knows? Who knows? They, they've, they've got it in to implode, haven't they, I guess? But... I'm with you, though, I think, Chris. I think if they beat Ireland, that's it. I can't see them losing to Murrayfield. With you know, all due respect to that Scotland team, it, it is a good goal. Goal. It's a tricky place to go, Murrayfield, in fairness. But, yeah, I, I can't see it. I, I, I don't think there's yeah. any fear for this French team, though. No. No, I don't think so. It's going to be a very intriguing tournament. There's so many big name players missing. Is like it's going to be strange not seeing the likes of Sexton, Farrell, Courtney Laws, Dan Bigger, and yeah, it's going to be very intriguing. I'm looking forward to it. So, Chris, before you go, I just got uh, one last question for you. Uh, I'll let you get back to your transfer deadline vlog then. So, the Dragons have got nine games left now to try and move themselves a little bit higher up the table. They've got a tough run of games, um, and it all starts in Glasgow in a couple of weeks. Be honest, do you see Dragons making any improvements in the second half of the season? Or should we expect more pain? Oh, let me put it another way. Do you think we can avoid finishing um, bottom of the league? Because at some point, you know, the Sharks are going to pull away. There's far too much quality <coughs> there. So, um, or could you see us being, you know, worst first region again? How, how do you see the second half of the season panning out? I do, I do think there's some reason, reason for optimism. I don't think he's, you know, We'll, we'll see. I mean, nine games. Look at them now. I think that 
they can be looking to win. I don't know. It, they've been good in Newport. So, so uh, Glasgow away and Ulster are away is very tough. Well, yeah. it depends who comes, I guess. And then, yeah, quick turnaround to Zebra. But it, they've got to win that Zebra one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one. And then away yes. at Benetton, tough. Connacht at home, you, you'd like to think once again at home, do something. Stormers, in, in, you never know. It's, uh, I, I think they can get a few wins. I think they can fin avoid finishing bottom. And I think they it's in them to finish above the Scarlet. It, it'd be... Be, yeah. It would be nice for, for the for the um to set up the event if it's a almost a shootout against the Scarlets at Judgment Day to avoid being yeah being bottom. I think that'd be that'd be good. And if the Dragons can give themselves a shot at that, they'll be in it. Um and you know, and then you, you never know. So yeah, I think. Uh, but I think that there are there are good things to come from. I think you know some of the young lads, some of the developing. So yeah. Oh, that's an optimistic note to end on. I uh, appreciate that, uh, Chris. Not, nice it's, it's not. <laughs> I, I'm not not feeling myself then. So, uh, <laughs> uh, no, brilliant. Um, like I said, we really appreciate you um, coming on, Chris. I know you're a busy guy, so um, thank you very much. Love to have you on the pod again soon, um, yeah. if you will. And um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Cheers. Look, look forward to it. And I didn't swear as much as David Buttress. So there we are. It's, uh... Did you listen to? Oh, you did listen to our interview then, Chris? Did you? He, he did. He's good. Yeah, we could could sign a new lock with the amount he had to put in the swear jar. Uh... <laughs> he was good, we, wasn't he, Gav? We, we, we recorded our really late at night as well, yeah, didn't we? We were all a bit tired. He was great. Yeah. yeah, we recorded it quite late at night, so you know he clearly fought after the watershed. Mm. <laughs> Throw her about a bit. <laughs> nah, it was a great interview. Brilliant. Anyway, thank Good. you, Chris. Brilliant. Thank All you, right. Chris. All the best, fellas. Cheerio. Cheers. Cheers. Bye, Bye, now. Bye now. Thank you. Here we go. So that was Chris Kerwin from the South Wales Argus. Um, it's worth subscribing to the Argus for Chris's articles, not just on the Dragons, but County. Very, very good uh, sports writer. One of the best in Wales, I think. I, I rate him quite highly. Okay, so um, let's move on to the Gwent Rugby Roundup. Gav, what have you got for us? Well, uh, we start in the Premiership where, uh, as you pointed out on uh, Saturday, I was very happy, man. Uh, Eberville beating Neef 73 oh, poor Neef. They're but, having a wretched season, Neef, and they? I mean, it's a great result for, obviously, you know, Eberville, but I do feel a bit for Neef. Now, because I'm older than you, and I keep pointing this out, I got to watch the great Neef side of the 80s. Yeah, and to watch that Neef side now, it's it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that Neef side of the eighties was phenomenal and evil. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know if you've ever been down to the Knoll on a midweek. I trip. haven't. It is a no. phenomenal atmosphere. I remember uh, it was a yeah, it was Neef Swansea game. Oh, I don't know about eighty seven, eighty eight. Went with my dad on the Tuesday night, and there's that Neef, Neef, Neef chant, and it just rolls across the terrace. It was a terrifying place to go in the eighties. Sadly, now for Neef, not a terrifying place uh, no. to go. Uh, Newport won the thirty six five against Carmarthen Quins. And Pontypool lost 29-26 way to Pontypool. So, Llandavry is still top. They won against RGC. Newport in second. Uh, Everill in second. Newport in third. With Newport in games in hand. So, Gwen side will come top three. Don't know if they'll overhaul Llandavry. In the championship, Newbridge lost away to Glamorgan Wanderers 29-17. Uh, Penalsa won 73 uh, 18 at home to Triochi. Excellent win uh, for those boys. Uh, Cross Keys won 55 19 away to St. Peter's in Division 1 East. Uh, Abgaveni won 17 10 against Pontypool United, holding a bit of a, a, a rough set of results for Abgaveni, so they'll be pleased with that. Uh, Blaine Avon beat Bed Linog 20 uh, points to 12. Uh, Tallawine, excellent win for them. Away to Dowless up on the top there, losing uh, or winning 23 at Dowless. Uh, Anis D, uh, they've been doing well in the league, but they lost 34-26 away to Nelson. Riska lost quite heavily at home, 27-40 against Monmouth. And the unbeaten Brynmau side remains unbeaten with a 17-13 win against St. Genes. 
in Division 2 East, uh, Croesa Kiliog beat Caldecott 34 19. Oakdale and Pill Harriers, cracking game that up, uh, up in Oakdale 27 0. And Ask beat Kai Leon 25 0. Division 3 East, uh, Abacan lost 24 16 at home to Chepstow. Uh, Slanillas lost 12 26 against RTB Ebervale. And Machen won at home 46 12 against Fleur de Lee. Going into Division 4 East, Bedwelde uh, lost 14 26 at home to Gwynedd. Uh, Crick Howell beat St Julian's High School Old Boys 45 12. Haverdanis uh, lost 21 38 at home to Crumlin. And uh, a cracking game down uh, at uh, the breeding ground for many a, a dragon player. Whitehead beat Blackwood Stars 36 33. In Division 5 East, Hollybush beat Westmont 37 7. And uh, unbeaten Pont and Fife remain unbeaten with a 24 8 win against Abersacken. And then going into the, the, the lower reaches, Division 6 East, Gurlin uh, 5, Mago 32. Tradiga Ryan sides, one of my dad's old team, uh, beat Old Hilarians 19-14, and Trinant won heavily against Cum County United. But we also have an update from the Dragons All-Stars, who, if you remember, mm-hmm. were uh, raising uh, attention to their game. Yep. So we got a little bit of a match report from them. It was a fantastic win for the Dragons All-Stars on the weekend, 26-5 over Long Levens. They were three weeks break before uh, from fixes before taking on Port Albert Panthers at Risk RFC on the 18th of February. Then another two weeks rest from fixes before they tripped to Belfast to face Malone Tornadoes on the 2nd of March ahead of the Ulster Dragons fixes that evening. There are some other uh, weeks for fixes who will be training at Risk RFC every Wednesday from 17.50 p.m. New players 17.15, sorry. Call past seven. New players are welcome. And as I promised, I will uh, try to identify a fixer that I will drag my boots <laughs> on for. I didn't get to play last weekend. Our opposition cancelled at the the last moment. And uh, oh, right, yeah. Uh, it's annoying I, when that happens, isn't it? Well, uh, our opposition this, out, yeah. our opposition this week have done it as well. Nobody won. Nobody wants to come to the fortress that is uh, Ark Alexandra Academy. <laughs> upper field, upper playing fields. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Um, is that it, Gav, for your update? That is indeed, yes. Excellent. Um, before we go, um, I asked listeners, our oh, wonderful listeners, for their thoughts on the Dragon season, just in general, you know, do they think we're making improvements? Will they be happy with and they're not happy with? So I'll just read out a few of you before we end. So Clive Palmer, someone I know quite well, sits in the row in front of me. Some of the games are winnable. Saying now we need to learn from them. I always look forward to the positives. Yeah, I mean, if we win more games, then you can find more positives, can't you? It's easier to be positive if you're winning more games. When you're losing, we can read out. It is harder, personally, for me anyway. But uh, I, I get Clive's point. Steve Davis says, great news that Dyer and Wainwright have been retained, but we desperately need to see some really good signings. He says, I honestly don't think we've improved from last year. And we've missed some really good opportunities to win games. He also adds, it would be great if we could get Di Flanagan on the pod. Um, if Di Flanagan is listening to this, or anyone who knows Di is listening to this, we would love to have Di Flanagan on the pod. I did copy him in on um, X as well, just to see if he would respond. He hasn't responded yet. But uh, yeah, you know, we've had David Buttress. We've had James Benjamin. I would love to have um, Di Flan on the pod. That would be um, quite good, wouldn't it? Oh, that so, would be um, a highlight for me, I think. And absolutely. Then, uh, I, love to, I love to pick his brain. So I got a few questions. <laughs> I need <laughs> to answer it, to be honest. But uh, no, if, if he's listening or anyone who knows him, yeah, we'd love to have him on the pod. Right. Nathan Dark said, well, the season is going as expected, he says. Um, just thankful Sam Costello didn't bring his uh, kicking boots. He refer- refers to those two dire derbies we had. Um, retaining um, Rio and Alan Wainwright was a positive for him. Um, Mike says a disappointing start and not much prospect of improvement. Priority must be a front five. Yeah, I, I think we can all agree with that. We've had a couple of comments about the front five. Graham gets in touch and says, when are the region going to prioritise developing the front five? Um, games are won and lost you. Doesn't matter if you add Gareth Edwards and Barry John at halfback. 
we've had a competitive front five. We were sit languishing in the bottom two. It, it's been a problem for ages to have the front five. You know, we've spoken it about has. on the pod a lot every season. You know, I, I've been on social media for a long time. We as Dragon fans always talk about the front five. And it's not like we haven't tried to improve it. You know, like I said, you know, you know, you bring in players like Rob Evans and you bring in Aki Salou. You think they're going to make an impact, but they, they just don't today. It's really frustrating, no, the front five. I think the front five thing, though, was a grand thing, isn't it? Because we, you know, unlike our uh, fancy mates further west in the country, we do love a hard bloke in Gwent. And I think that's why we always kind of talk about front five players in Gwent. You know, we've we've built well, we've built world beating front rows in our valley. So, you know, we we expect it. I do think the dragons are trying to develop a front row. Though, you know, that's why players like Hotlin and Yendel are, are getting into the squad because yeah. they're trying to develop these young players uh, into uh, a functioning front row. The problem is as proven by the, the guys who are starting that they were in free for Wales this weekend, there's not many of them out there. No, that's the thing. Um, oh, I guess in touch, she said, pre-season expectations, lost some big names, so hard to expect improvement. First two games at home, Edinburgh bring back four internationals, Cardiff bring back three internationals, we bring back none. That was the difference in both games. Um, the only thing I would say, though, I, um, you should have beaten Edinburgh. Um, I, I don't think the fact they brought back internationals was the difference in that game. The difference was we refused to take the points on offer and we did not build the lead that we should have done and then we shut the bed and we lost. So uh, <laughs> Edinburgh should have been a winnable game. Cardiff was just diabolical. Yeah, it was frustrating for that game where you know they did uh, sort of rush back their internationals, didn't they, Cardiff? And, and we didn't. Um, Dan Lidget was due to play, but he pulled out. So, um, yeah, well, some, some frustration there, I think. Well, but I, I think... It, it... I, the internationals didn't make the difference in the first game against Cardiff. It was a fact we we missed our opportunity with Jared Rosser, and then we were bloody boneheaded when we kicked the ball. It's not we kicked the ball too much; we kicked the ball wrong. And, yeah, and that's he, what lost he, us that game. Yeah, he did add that um, Wayne Wright and Rio signing the positives. I will buy another season ticket. Good man. That's that's what we need. You know, in these tough times, and we know it's it's very difficult being a Dragon supporter. We know it, but. You gotta keep buying a season ticket and then going to support the club, um, because they, they need our support. And oh. if the club is going to survive, it needs people. That's the good key. people buying into it. Yeah. If they, if you don't, yeah. it doesn't survive, does it? Which is easy yes. for me to say because I live the direct opposite either side of the country. But you know, it's uh... yeah, it... absolutely. No, you're right. Uh, Stephen has said um, he's talking about the lack of cutting edge in our backs. Line breaks are really made. Jared Ross has raised this game, but never seemed to be coasting. Um, I think that's a little bit harsh, to be honest. But I do think there is an issue with our attack. And that comes under the remit of Matt O'Brien and Di Flanagan. Um, the, the, the cutting edge, we definitely need that. Because, you know, you, you watch uh, the Sharks game and go back to Zebra game and other games before that. When We're not very good. We're good again into the 22 but we're just not clinical when we're in the red zone. We lack accuracy, don't yeah. we? You know, we, we yeah. make plenty of entries, but we just haven't got that finishing yeah. touch that we need. Because I don't think it's cutting edge that we lack. It's precision. Because, uh, you mm. know, the, we do make line breaks. We, you know, Will, Reed loves a, 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 Will Reed loves a lovely, di- runs a lovely diagonal right line off, off the nine a lot. And it's very difficult to defend. And you know, Seal Tomkinson, his his lines of running are less fancy. They're just quite uh, route one, and he can do it. You know, and Jared broke the line a few times. You and Ross has broken the line, so I think we're breaking the line. Like you say, it's just we, you know, we get in the final third and we fall apart. To use a football uh, analogy. Yep. Owen gets in touch. He says it's been really inconsistent. Overall, I would say it's below expectations. We know we're no world beaters, and it's a work in progress. But some massive defeats have been really disappointing. Although, on a positive note, he adds, um, he, he likes the fact that we're developing young Gwent talent, and he says it's the way forward. So, um, yeah, those are fair points, I'd say. Yeah, you know, it, it's good to end on that positive and to say, look, it, it, this season has been below expectations, Gab, isn't it? I'd say so, yeah. We both said we felt we could finish 12th, 13th. And maybe we are 
maybe we're over the top, you know, maybe maybe we are glass half full types, but it has it, we, I think we have underperformed. I'm really disappointed. I know I mentioned this before, but Europe for me is a massive letdown. Yeah. Because yeah. we should have been in the last sixteen. And um I would have expected this to be a bit more competitive in the league. Um there's been too many lopsided defeats, isn't it? It does feel a little bit like the same old um yeah, so for me, I have to say it's underwhelming. I, I don't think 13th was too optimistic. I mean, I, I can tell you this now. When I made my predictions on the rap pod, Lee asked us to put our predictions where each region is going to finish out on social media. When I put out that the Dragons are finishing 13th, people got in touch with me saying, oh, that's uh, you know, that's a bit negative. I thought you'd have the Dragons a bit higher, you know, be a bit more optimistic with the squad you've got now with everybody coming down to the same budget. Now it looks like it's a little bit over optimistic, isn't it? But I did think that Cardiff would, in, in, you know, in fairness to Cardiff, they have been very competitive. And I think the chaos they had in the off season has brought them together. You know, a bit that adversity has, you know, made them a stronger unit. Um, and they are performing better than expected. But um, I, I did think we'd be a bit more competitive. And I, I did think we'd be, well, not where the Ospreys are, but I, I did think we'd be sort of maybe second best Bosch team. You know, but, and but, the thing uh, is, even, up, even the Ospreys, right? Ospreys, and I'll, I'm coming around your way of thinking. Well, you you were always right. They are the best of the Welsh teams, but they're oh, probably, they yeah. but they're probably the only the seventh best team in that league. Yeah, but let's not forget with the Ospreys as well. They have got the best squad, um, and even when they're down to the bare bones, there's a lot of fight and grit and You know, this is what I was talking about earlier. I, I just want to see Dragons have that fight. We saw um, yeah. Ospreys in South Africa, that amazing comeback when he gets the line. They had like 20-odd players missing. They were down to the bare bones. I want to see that from the Dragons. I'm not expecting us to win week in, week out. I want to oh. see fight. I want to see grit. I want to see determination. If the going gets tough, I, I want us to be able to bounce back and learn how to be better under pressure instead of buckling and the heads dropping. That's all I want to see from this Dragons team. And, um, you know, Ospreys have got good culture. But Toby Booth is the most experienced out to the four coaches. Let's not forget that. They're probably a little bit further down the road, than, well, a lot further down the road than we are, I would say. The rest and, of us have got sort of rookie coaches, haven't we? You know, Dwayne uh, Peel yeah. is still, you know, learning as a head coach. I mean, this, is he really up to the job as head coach? We don't know. Di Flanagan, we could ask the same question about Di Flanagan. He's learning on the job. Is he up to the head jo- coach job? Jury's still out. And you've got um, Matt Sherrod as well, jockey at uh, Cardiff, who's doing a very good job. Yeah. He's been chucked into it as well. Yeah, Toby Booth mystifies me because whenever he talks, he reminds me of Ted Lasso. It's <laughs> believe and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's not really gritty. Like you know, kind of like you hear Dari talk, and he's a uh, well, you know, I need to, we need to do this, we need to, and you know, Toby Booth talks in Ted Lasso style. Uh, home but it works, Gaff. Maybe that's yeah. what Dari Flanagan needs to start doing. Maybe he needs to be more Ted Lasso to get. Some more out of the players. Who knows? I, I think Who the knows? work on the paddock is what works for uh, Ospreys. You know mm. that because you know I, I think that's where our work is lacking because there are still errors being made. Anyway, I'm not going to criticize them after we've said bring Di on. Oh no, absolutely yeah. not. Like I said, I'd love to have a good chat. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just you know no. giving my my honest yeah. opinion. Uh, like well, I said, we'd love to get Di on. Rio on would be good as well. He would, wouldn't it? We'll have to yeah. send his mum a DM or a sister well, I, to try and I, sort that I, out. I know they listen as well, so, you know. They absolutely do. Absolutely <laughs> do. Um, okay, so if you're going to rate the season, Gav, I think we all agree, Chris, me and you today, we've done the last of all this. Yeah. It has been disappointing. It has got that familiar feeling about it. It has been underwhelming. Yeah. Um, and it's great news about Rio and Aaron Stein and yes, there is young talent. But overall, it's been disappointing. Why are you rating the season so far out of 10? Out of ten, good. I was like, you know, I'd, uh, I, I often have to make these kind of decisions in a professional context, but uh, this is slightly <laughs> different. Uh, how would I read this out of ten? Uh, four and a half. Four, no, not a half. Four out of ten. I can agree. I'm going. I'm going to say four. Um, you do expect the dragons to cop a couple of heavy defeats. I'm really still upset and annoyed about that Cardiff game, though. That that was a real sucker punch, that was. Because we just didn't see that coming, did we? And that, for me, is 
you know, the Sharks were disappointed. You know, that was a record defeat, but you could kind of see that coming. Because, it took a you know, week squad Sharks, out to the... Yeah. We had injuries, we had a weak squad. And don't forget, Sharks put all their Springbok players back, didn't they? So they were fully yeah. loaded and at home. They had a point to prove. They were always going to go gung-ho at this. So I kind of expected that. I'm a little bit disappointed about the last 20 minutes because it did look like, you know, we talked about them throwing in the white towel and stuff. But um, the Cardiff one, that, that still leaves a sour taste in my mouth, but the Cardiff game. And I wasn't even there, like I said, I was over on Ukraine, but I watched the game back. A fair play to the supporters who went there. You know, if, if you turned up and paid money to see that, you know, it's, it's I, just... Uh, I was happen, listening to that game on the M on the M four. We were driving up. Were we driving back? No, we were driving back. No, we were driving to my mum's. Yeah, we were driving up to Wales. And there was, yeah. a, there was one point we just got past Swindon, and I felt like opening the door and just rolling out to the car rather than listening to it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awful. We can never see another performance like that in a derby game, and because the the games against Cardiff used to so much closer, they much tighter. We, we know the outcome, we always lose, but they're all much tighter. And to see that happen was just, um, yeah, it leaves a sour taste in the mouth for me. Right, before we go then, Gav, I want to get your prediction as well on Wales. I don't think I asked you for your prediction. What do it you think the score is going to be? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm asking you now. So, no, who's going to win this weekend? <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Uh who do I think is going to win this weekend? I've had, I know you were speaking to Johnny McGinty on the rap, rap podcast, and I've been talking to Johnny today, and he thinks I'm insane that I think Wales might win. I, I don't think Wales will win, but I think they might win. So uh, I think Scotland will win 21-18. But I wouldn't be surprised if Wales won by the same score. Yeah, so we talked about this on the rap pod and I said that Scotland would never have a better time to end this hoodoo. So they haven't won in Cardiff since 2002. But you look at the two teams, the lineups, it should be a pretty straightforward win for Scotland. Yeah. However, I just got this feeling they're going to shit the bed again. I, I've just got this feeling that Scotland are going to turn up full of confidence and it's going to go wrong for them. Um, so- the roof is open, isn't it? Yeah. The roof is going to be open. The, the, the Cardiff factor... Um, I, I got a feeling we'll win. And I could be horribly wrong. I probably will be. We might get pumped. But I just got this feeling that we're going to pull off a win, yeah? So I'm going to say Wales by six. Johnny said to me when I was chatting with him earlier, he said that third is the bare minimum Scotland expect this time rather than, you know, a target. Yeah. And today's, you know, Saturday's where they'll define that. But I think we could bite them in the arse. Mm. If they don't beat this Welsh team, then we can't take Scotland seriously for the rest of the tournament, as far as I'm concerned. You you can't take them seriously. Well, no, if they nor as a, a tournament winning team. If if they genuinely and you know, I I try not to pay too much attention to rugby fans because all rugby fans are a bit one eyed. But if if they <laughs> what do you genuinely, mean? <laughs> well, we aren't. But we that's because no. we're the best. That's because we're the best yeah. ones, Jamie. But I if, you know, if you think you're a tournament winning side, you have to come to Cardiff. And win convincingly, because Paris, uh, France will, Ireland will. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you may or may not be playing this weekend. Then you you don't know. If well, you, will you be, well, so if you're playing, you won't be able to watch the game. Then will you? Or will no, you? no, I will be. I, it's two o'clock kickoff. Oh yeah, that's all right. Then. The the, yeah. the the plan was two o'clock kickoff at home, then watch the game in the clubhouse. Sounds good. Uh, afterwards. No, it depends if we, you know, people listening to a Dragons podcast don't want to know about the intricacies of Sussex rugby. But <laughs> most, most of the Sussex clubs are in the middle of the county. And okay. we're we're out on like the kind of far east corner of it. And there's only three clubs in our area. And there's like 15 around Brighton. So clubs don't like to travel to us. Mm. Just because oh, we live yeah. in the arse end of nowhere. So, you know, I don't know. I'll probably be in some weird bit of Kent tomorrow if I want to play rugby. We'll see what happens on Saturday. It's not even, yeah, it's not Friday. I've lost track of days. I but just took a film. You have retired, yeah? I, yeah, I'm fully retired, yeah. <laughs> apart, from the, <laughs> apart from the weekends, I'm not. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. Oh, okay. I'm retired apart from when I play. <laughs> retired apart from when I play. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think we'll call it uh, 
Absolutely. Call it a wrap now. Um, yeah, there was a really good chat with Chris, wasn't there? I enjoyed that. I'm always good to get his, um, his insights. Um, yeah. Fair play to him for juggling both um, County and Dragons. Yeah. But, um, I yeah, knew really, no, really who might, knows, we might wake up to County signing someone really exciting. Or we wake up and Will Evans is gone. <laughs> or someone like that, Shane McLaughlin, that the Uno's fingers crossed. Yeah. That won't happen. I, but, you know, um, I'd be all right if Will went to a Saudi Arabian club for 10 million. Yeah. yeah. He deserves <laughs> it. The form, he's, the form he's on at the moment, and I'd be great for the county, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Okay, then I think we'll leave it there, Gav. Thank you as always for thank joining you, me, and thank you all for listening. We'll be back not Thanks next so. week, the week after, I think, is next because Glasgow is our next game. So I think we might. Given a missed next, we're going to be back in a, a yes. couple of weeks. So hopefully we'll have um, Johnny McKinty join us if his internet is working because uh, we did the rap pod this week and we had some technical issues from Johnny, it's fair to say. We so did, uh, indeed. Yeah, we will have to see how that one goes. But uh, like I said, thank you, Gav, and thank you all for listening. We'll speak soon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Dragon's Lair podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe, rate and review wherever you listen to us as it really helps spread the word. You can find us on all the usual social media channels or email us on welshregionalrugbypod at gmail.com. And remember, whatever the question is, rugby is always the answer. Sports Social Podcast Network. As a major research institution, Arizona State University offers the most online bachelor's degree programs, along with world-class faculty and dedicated support. Discover why ASU is ranked number one in innovation for nine consecutive years. Tap to learn more.